You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 62. Don't give me no lip. The Flangeless Hybrid Prosthesis. Recorded live at the Voices of Dentistry 2018, we bring you Justin Moody. Did Justin find a way to eliminate the need for acrylic and lip support in full arch implant prosthetics? Or is acrylic just irreplaceable? In this interview, we discuss how his implant education continuum is going, his thoughts on ISQ testing for implants, and his impressions on placing the first of the new BioHorizon short implants. We're here to put Justin on record this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'll tell you, we've got some pretty exciting stuff coming up for you today uh, with this interview mm. uh, with, with Justin Moody. Uh, it's going to be pretty amazing, it's good I think. Stuff, if man. You, we put if, him on record. Saw, well, if you saw the title, you kind of maybe were a little bit uh, you know, intrigued by the <laughs> title, which is uh, Don't Give Me No Lip. Don't give you know, me no lip. So we're gonna we're gonna get to what that means. And speaking of speaking of implants, Wes, it's been a it's been a big couple of weeks in the implant yeah. world. Of course, if you're uh, you know watching or listening to this, it's several weeks after. But we just finished uh, the Academy of Austin Integration meeting, and unfortunately, just due to some craziness this year, Wes and I weren't able to go. It's the first time I've missed this meeting in like ten years. But yeah. I was able to do I'm so disappointed some, in you, John. I, I I know. I'm it's disappointed in me. We I'm really, disappointed in myself. But there's 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 some light at the end of the tunnel for you guys that are waiting for our AO recap. Yeah, John, it's tell coming. us about that. Tell us about that. It's coming. Well, yeah. first of all, I I saw the AO did a live stream of their opening and closing symposiums this year for the first time, which was really cool. Yep. And of course, I had to tune in, so I tuned into this panel discussion. Which I, if you check out our uh, our Facebook page, um, you're gonna see a little recap video reaction video I did to that because it was just an epic discussion panel with some of the best uh, smartest guys in the world talking about some really interesting just uh, Mike Norton, topics just Cochran yeah a little uh, Thomas Albrechtson yeah you know I mean, Dave Cochran yeah, yeah. He didn't know just anything. some yeah. small you know Dennis Tarnow people that invented that implants I mean you know yeah new guys all new yeah so uh, what we're planning on doing Wes and I are you know oh, we're every not planning year, we are oh it's happening yeah, yeah. Every year, the AO, uh, you go there and they say, hey, we're going to release all this on DVD if you want to buy it. And it's like, you know, some it's crazy like a, a thousand crazy amount of money. Yeah, it's, it's, a it's a Yeah, it's a few hundred bucks, a thousand bucks. <laughs> and it's all the speakers and all of their lectures all recorded. Mm. So Wes and I are going to get together at an undisclosed location mm. involving the a big... Sc- <laughs> the cave, the man cave, which has recently been completed, uh, oh, which man. involves a, a projector and a big screen, and we're going to watch. We're going to watch. We're going to watch AO. Ready Player One. We got to preview this, guys. <laughs> yeah, after Ready Player One, then chapter we're fourteen. Watch, by the way, I'm doing chapter fourteen. You're man. doing it? Oh, dude, I've after I've you. Been, <laughs> I was so hopeful that you would. So want, not only am I, do you love it? A, oh my goodness! Oh my Anybody goodness! Anybody who has not read the book, I'm, Ready Player One, oh. amazing. My goodness. Now, I mean, I'm a child of the 70s, John, early 80s. Yeah. And, um, man, and guess what? So, like, there's a point where he walks into the room, and there's a TRS-80 sitting over in the corner. And (laughs) I had, my dad had a TRS-80 that I played D&D on. You know, you come to a point in the room where you need (laughs) to go left and right. Type left or right. Yeah. I mean, like, dude, this, 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 this book... I know, I know we're digressing on something that doesn't have anything to do with dentistry. Oh, but it's so but good. It is so good. So yep. I called my dad after I'd read like five, 10 chapters or something. I said, Dad, go get the book. So he's already through chapter seven tonight. He told me, he's like, dude, <laughs> dude, he's like, this is amazing. This could really happen. You know, my dad was born in 50, but he was the guy that had the TRS 80s, the He Ataris, had the cool stuff. And all the, the cool yeah. stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. And so, so he totally makes it for him. But we're going to take, after we watch Ready Player One, we're going to take the AO 
video and we're going to watch it. And yeah. we're going to be just geeking out, eating popcorn, oh, man. you know, like we're at the, and it's going to be like a, an epic day. And we're even maybe going to get a couple of our specialists to, uh, to come down and get involved. And we're going to have some spirited discussion. Mm. And then after spirited discussion, we're going to recap it. And we're going to really have some real time to think about it before we recap it this year because, you know, the video, you can, like, you know, really dwell on some stuff. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm super pumped about be this amazing. because next year we're going, you know, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, back. we'll be back. Hey, we got some we got some cool stuff coming up. Like, next year we're going to be going to some meetings we've never been to. Yeah. I mean, I can't say much. No, but there's some stuff coming. There's some stuff. Some pretty some big st- stuff. Some big stuff. Big stuff, man. <laughs> so, hey, look, we were so excited to have Justin Moody on the show. And I really appreciate what he's done for getting more people placing implants and doing it right. Because from what we can tell, we haven't been to his thing, but from what we can tell outside looking in and talking to Justin, man, you just, you just feel the passion. You know, he wants to do it right. And he's doing some really cool stuff in his clinic out there where they're placing a lot of implants. They're using a BioHorizon implant. They, they, he was the he placed the first BioHorizon shorty, the new shorty, yeah, uh, in the United Pretty States. Awesome. And I think what that's so honor. cool. But we also ask him some tough questions about: Can you really eliminate um, a flange mm-hmm. in patients that need lip support? And 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 his answer because there's been a lot of talk about that. Well, his from answer certain people surprises out there. because he Me has too. some really good friends that yeah. say you can't. Now you right. all know that we have had some really good clinicians on the show um, that talk about different types of full arch prostheses. So we wanted to talk to Justin about it because he has an implant uh, exclusive practice and he also trains uh, dentists to place dental implants at a high level. So shout out to Justin Moody. Moody from uh, Dentist Implants and Worms. I want you guys to really enjoy this, and uh, we'll come back to you at the end for just a brief commentary. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And this week's episode, we're live at the Voices of Dentistry podcast. And for The Dental Guys, it's been brought to you by Kittenbach, or Kettenbach, John. I keep pronouncing <laughs> it wrong. Get it but, right. But The Dental Guys live stream is brought to you by Kettenbach, and you know, the product that I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> is the Panacil Tray Soft Material. It's a silicone impression material, PVS, and um, fantastic. It comes in soft, heavy, heavy, fast. Listen, the thing that I like about it, it has a snap set for PVS material. Um, it's as good as it gets, really. And so I want to, I want to just uh, give Kattenbach a shout-out, and thank you so much for sponsoring the Dental Guys live stream. Hey, buy smart, buy direct buy Kettenbach and look if you're looking to maybe bring Kettenbach to your practice that's what we want because if you support them you support the dental guys and you want you to call Eric Cortez at 1-877-532-2123 and on the show I'd like to welcome Dr. Justin Moody Justin Uh, thanks thanks for for having me it's been almost a year yeah we we were on your show it was really cool because you know we met really at the Voices of Dentistry it was the first time we really met. We had listened to your stuff and it was kind of cool because I mean, we connected really, I think really well because you're one of those guys who does your homework. You've done your homework and you've talked a lot about that before <clears throat> that, hey, you, you, you went through COIS, you went through a lot of clinical training, a lot of implant training and you're using that and it was a really cool connection. So we're glad to have you on and, and get to talk to you again. And, and you're part big part of Voices Dentistry this year with uh, kind of getting involved with it directly, right? Yeah, so cool. yeah, um, <clears throat> Sean Van de Viever, who was uh, instrumental in putting it uh, together last year, uh, uh, just had, uh, you know, a new kid and uh, just, I think he's got like four kids, uh, you know, under the age of like six yeah. and he's like, it was just too much work and gotcha. I've, got a, I've got a great team. Yeah. Uh, here we've got uh, Jeff and uh, uh, Austin and the and the guys here. So they spent a lot of time, you know, this year putting helping put, put together. Well, with the Alan organizers and Jason. done a great job. Yeah, it's been a great yeah, meeting absolutely. so far. And and absolutely. you know, for those of you who don't know, Dr. Moody, um, he's uh, uh, he's got a lot of cool stuff going on right now. He's been involved in implantology for a long time. Practices in uh, Nebraska and also South Dakota, right? Yep. And and uh, founder of the South Dakota Dental Implant Center. Um, and then uh, in the last few years especially has been involved with 
the dental implant pathway, which is a really cool uh, a way to learn your how to how to place and restore implants. Um, and and that's something I'd love to just maybe lead off with is just tell us how implant pathways going. You know, tell us a little bit about what the last couple of years have been like, uh, how it's growing, kind of where it's at. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So, um, you know, it was back in 2012 that, uh, you know, I actually tried this uh, once before. We, we opened a uh, teaching institute in downtown Denver called the Rocky Mountain Dental Institute. And we run it for two and a half years. And a little bit of a uh, field of dream thing, you know, you build it and they come. Well, okay. nobody, nobody, nobody stepped out of the corn for me, <laughs> you know, and, uh, I did it a little bit, uh, you know, I did a little bit backwards, you know, I thought we could, uh, I thought I had a good message and I had a great faculty and such, but, uh, at the end of the day, not that many people had heard of me. So, uh, we closed those doors and, uh, you know, I left a lot of money, you know, and it bailed out and some things, you know, in downtown Denver, but at the end of the day, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to give up on that because I really do, I do, I really do love to mentor and teach. So uh, a few years ago, uh, you know, late in uh, 20, you know, late in 2015, uh, uh, my good friend uh, Mike Frymouth and I decided we were going to do this. Uh, we're going to try it again. Uh, this time, uh, uh, we went to the road. So we started doing our courses in five cities across the U.S. The didactic part. Uh, there's an online portion that we uh, uh, have, and then. Uh, we found a clinic that we could do some live implant training, you know, domestically. And that was kind of, that, that became the backbone of what we're, you know, what we're doing. Cool. Cool. So it's now, so there's an online portion <clears throat> and then there's a series, it's a series, right? There's a series yep. of, of courses that are, that are, that no, some John, is, it's a pathway. Well, it's a pathway. That's it's right. a pathway, of course. We must step down the pathway. Right. It's a pathway, of courses. And how much of that would you say is surgical? versus how much of that is theory and restorative side? I mean, is, is it mainly focused on the surgery side? No, I don't think so. I think we, okay. we have, I think we have a, I think we have an equal balance of surgical and prosthetics because yeah. as you guys know, uh, you can't do the surgery without having the prosthetic first. Like you've got to know where you're going before you could ever take a blade or put an implant into that, into that spot. So what, I, I, what I talked about earlier this morning was like, there is no, um, I'm not Carl Misch. Like I didn't, I didn't invent any of this stuff, you know, but I'm a, I'm a culmination of all the people that have influenced me, you know, yeah. from, uh, from Carl himself to John Coyce to, you know, Mike Picos and, yep. and Russo and all, all these people that I've, you know, that I consider leaders and, and people that ground themselves in science and, and, uh, uh, you know, technology. So we took a lot of those things, and Mike and I sat down and like, you know, we don't need people to travel across the country or take days out of their, their work to learn, you know, implant rationale, pharmacology, bone physiology. Yep. And those are the things that we put into the online portion. As you guys know, that foundation is, is has to be laid. You got to have it. it. It has to be yep. laid. You have to understand the physiology of what we're going to do. But you don't necessarily have to travel all that way. And that's what, you know, John and, and Carl made you do is that's why you had so many continuums. And we're like, you know, today's CE is changing. Right. You know, so we put that online and then it allowed us to concentrate and have very specific goals in the, the session two and session three that they actually come to a, to a course in one of these cities. And session two is predominantly surgical. You know, we have a, our, our goals for those courses are a to treat a plan and place implants in abundant bone on healthy individuals. Like the, the first 50 implants you should do should be on those people so you can have some success initially. Uh, now get it after two or three people always jump into some immediate and, and, and anterior, which is, you know, is just human nature. But right. we try to make sure that, you know, when you, when you leave session two, we hope that you can take a tooth out and socket graft reliably and predictably. Uh, we hope that you can uh, treatment plan abundant bone cases in healthy individuals. We hope that we've helped you in suturing, you know, learning how to, uh, you know, suture because truthfully, of all the things that we do, that's probably the most important part mm. and the hardest to teach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, right. And then uh, our other, uh, um, one of our other criteria for that one is we do introduce you to the edentulous mandible and placing implants between the foramens in a more, in a safer zone. Mm -hmm. And so... So we, we tell them, like, when you're done with session two, you know, we'd like you to go out 
and before you get to session three, place a couple implants. Right. Now, because, we, you know, if you're just getting into implant dentistry, your practices are full of cherry picks, of those abundant bone For cases. Sure. Like, you don't need to do crazy stuff. Like, just find some abundant bone patients on your your teammates your 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 your, your team members uh, parents and mm-hmm. their sisters like exactly. like you know non <laughs> right. non litigatable situations right you know? right right uh, We're there, but, yeah. but do that cuz when you come back to session 3 have some questions mm-hmm. yeah. you know so that you can you can you can give it some more and we we try to lecture for 90 minutes do a hands on do some lecture do some hands on yeah. then when you come to session 3 we dive into the restorative side okay. like okay. how do you you know, how do you uncover them? How do you manage the soft tissue? You know, how do you, uh, you know, how do you deal with uh, some crustal bone loss? Is it a, you know, because mm-hmm. we're going to have it. And, um, you know, which impression do you want? You want an open tray? You want a closed tray? Are you going to scan it? You know, what are the, what's the criteria for it? And then we, we dive a little bit into the edentulous maxilla, which is a, a, a totally different creature than the mandible. And then we, uh, we talk a little bit about, the last thing we teach them is uh, some guided implant surgery. And the reason we keep it for last is that I'm a firm believer that you got to know how to do it without to appreciate <laughs> what the guy does good for point. you. Absolutely. Totally. Uh, yeah, I just think that that, and then we yeah. have the, we have session four with the live surgery where we culminate it all together. They get to uncover, they get to restore, <laughs> they get to place, they get to do you know, all those things uh, in, a, in a controlled environment with your mentor. Awesome. So with the restorative side of that, at, that la- at those last sessions, how do you, because obviously I would think as the continuum goes on, as the, as the implant pathway goes on, you're going to have more cases you've done, more placements. So is that basically, are those cases that are placed the ones that end up being restored by like the next group? Is that kind of how that works? 100%. So now that we've done um, <clears throat> 12 sessions over the last uh, 18 months. Yeah. We have the snowball has been wound and rolled down the hill, you know. So every course that comes in, the first half a day that we do is all about uncovery and soft tissue management. So all these cases that we did, uh, you know, uh, a two stage, we uncover them, we teach them how to, you know, do that. We'll also have uncovered cases, you know, so they're already in healing abutments, custom right. healing abutments, whatever it is. They take the impressions. We have an on site dental laboratory that. Yeah. Uh, uh, if it's dentures, we'll deliver them the same appointment. So oftentimes you'll learn how to um, size cuff heights for the OD secure. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll see the patient back in a couple days, snap the denture in, and it's, it, it's a great environment. For the single units and the, the uh, aesthetic zone cases, uh, we have a, an on-site uh, full-time dentist, and that dentist does a lot of the follow-ups. Uh, for the course, because you got to remember, a course of this size, you know, you bring 12 doctors in to do this, we leave a big wake behind. Yeah, you got to have the clinical support to Definitely. be able to back up yeah, any complications. Yeah, the, the clinic is staffed with uh, 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 full-time residents <clears throat> and uh, some AGD residents. Like, you know, there's got to be people that can clean up the wake. Exactly. Right. Because, it, because you create Remove one. sutures, whatever, you know, if you have swellings or whatever. It pops you up. know, manage incision line openings. Yeah. And a lot of the people that we work on, it's no knock against them, but they're a little higher risk patients. Sure. Yep. You know, that's just, you know, but and we're going to have... That comes with the, you know, comes with it. Gotcha. But you're doing it domestically, which I think is great. You know, our commitment and every single patient, uh, we are uh, 1,960 implants placed. That's awesome. That's yeah. pretty And amazing. people that need it. 100%. Yeah. You know? So and tell, it, tell for those of you who don't know, tell, tell us who, who are you placing these implants into? Like, who, who are your patients? You know, about 40% of them are veterans you know that we get through uh awesome. you know different clinics around the you know the uh, metro phoenix the valley right uh, and then the other 60 percent are we do it at a homeless a non-profit homeless shelter uh but the real homeless people are, are not who we're working on mm. you mm-hmm. know like the, the ones that are destitute and in, in you know that are living on the uh, the street corner literally like that's really not the, the center takes care of them yeah but that's not who are the majority of the people we see have maybe pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, are in a halfway home, or they're you know mm-hmm. in their first apartment, yeah. and they're really trying to get reassimilated into the uh, society. Yep. And they need some teeth. Right. Yep. They you need know, to I mean, go to that job interview. Hundred percent. Yep. You know, I mean, you know, whether you're trying to get a, wa- a job at Walmart or McDonald's or whatever it is, like, you know, teeth still make a difference. They make sure. a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So oh, almost two thousand implants placed, and uh, obviously. 
working together too. I know you, you know, you've worked together with BioHorizons and they've been a big part of that, I'm sure, of helping you with the course. Is that true? So I mean, every so every one of those implants has been BioHorizons and it's one hundred percent donated. That's all that that's awesome. You know, really and, awesome. and if you think it's not just it's not just the implants, but it's the the OD secure uh, mm-hmm. uh, locator type pickup. Yeah. It's the impression copings, the biologics, the right. the from the from the Mineros to the Memlock to all those things. Like they donate. They've been provided. Yeah, they gave us brand new W and H motors with ISQ uh, uh, readers on the side. Like Sweet. it's just, you know, ten of those motors. Like that's seventy grand alone. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean that's a that's a big commitment, and they. Um, They've never wavered. They've done, you know, they've done exactly what uh, they've said they've done. And uh, well, and it's a great, it's a great thing for them too as a company. I mean, they they get to sleep better at night knowing yep. that this is going to a good cause as and well. Too, as most likely, those those people are going to go away with confidence in that implant system. That's right. It's and good for everybody. Be able to, yeah, it's good for everybody. It's one so. of those. If you think about it, like you know, I, I talked a little bit this morning about the the triple win. You know, the mm-hmm. the patient, mm-hmm. the patient gets the best treatment on the planet, mm-hmm. and that is uh, the the win number one. Win number two is that the the dentist gets experience, clinical mm-hmm. experience that they can take back to their practice and to help how many more people over their career. Like that's right. that's almost immeasurable. Right. And then the third win is truthfully the nonprofit. You know, we charge a you know, we charge tuition to go to the course, and about ninety percent of the tuition actually goes to uh, the the nonprofit to continue. Like they got to pay the dentist that. Yeah. That, that takes care of our weight. Absolutely. You know, and we look at this, we look at it a little different. Like our, our surgical session, uh, like we have to bring in, Mike and I, Mike Frymouth and I bring in four other faculty members because our deal is always one faculty member for every two docs. It's good. And they partner each other. So there's so there's never anybody working in there without their mentor over their shoulder. It's good. Right. It. You know, and it's it's costly to bring people in because, you know, the... But the that's doing it right. It, yeah, right. you have to do it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't, yeah. you can't have. Well, you forgot. There's a fourth thing, the bonus, and it's like the mentorship part of this. Yeah, right. you, you have a passion for that. As I it do. Came through earlier, and so that's the fourth part is that you're doing what you want to do, which is spreading the passion right. about how to mentor and taking it, taking what you really feel like that you can do good, and doing it, and and that, that, that's why you get up in the morning, Justin. It is. It you is. Know, when you go to Scottsdale. And you're getting ready to deliver a bunch of implants. You know, it's a bad day for titanium, but it's a <laughs> great day for Justin Moody because one, he's going to spread the love about implant dentistry to these dentists, yep. and it's just a win-win across the board. For you know, if 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 I could help someone see their potential in implant dentistry, and uh, I was telling someone on a, a podcast just a little bit ago, there's like, you know, are you leaving a legacy? And I said, well, I don't think about a legacy, but I, I, I presume that. It, that, that is something that is left behind. But, it's called a heritage. You know, passion on the heritage. Yeah. You know, I talked about that with my ranch and, you know, yeah. the, the stuff. But one of the things that I think uh, about is legacy-wise is the highest thing that I could, you know, I think the highest echelon that I could create would be to someday come to one of these events and see a picture of me and that person and then call to call right. me a mentor. You're the guy yeah. that's standing right. next the, to this. You know, guy. I showed you know I showed a picture of the my mentor and yeah. me helping his the guy that bought his practice. Like, you know, if I get to the left side right. of that one. You're doing all right. I'm done all right. Yeah, for sure. So I wanna get uh, you know we we have to get clinical because that's what we're all about. So Uh-oh. all right. Shit. So all right. <laughs> here it goes. All right, all right. Here it goes. So, Earmuffs. We're ready. Yeah. So, so, for this folks. So <laughs> if You've been, we talked about how BioHorizons, of course, has been the implant that's been placed, and you've been, you know, working with them for a long time. Have seen a lot of the, the evolution of that implant system. I want to know now that you, now that they've, you know, they introduced a few years ago, Tapered Plus, which yep. was, of course, a platform shift to connection with, uh, shall we say, a conical connection, but it's a little different connection than what they used to have. Um, what do you think now that you've been using this for several years? What are you seeing? Are you seeing big differences that are you think attributable to the implant design? How much of it is? How much has the implant design change made a difference in bone level maintenance, soft tissue maintenance? Well, all right. Um, I want to start. If you think about implant dentistry over time, like when I first started with BioHorizons and, and, and Carl Misch, you know, ten over a decade ago, uh, I learned on the external hex square threaded designed for load you know yeah. and and the old theory that 
you know, bone loss down to the first thread is, is, is clinically acceptable and it's got to get there and it's got to stop and, and those things. And uh, I placed them and then they came out with uh, uh, the tapered internal. Right. And uh, so we were said, well, you know, we can place it at the crest and, uh, you know, we're going to have less bone loss. And then they came up with uh, laser lock. Right. You know, uh, surface treatment. So if you had an uneven ridge and you had some implant that was uh, exposed in, uh, you know, in theory and clinical trials, the soft tissue would adhere to the laser lock and would create a biologic seal basically between the bone and the, uh, um, and the, and the, and the sulcus around it. And then uh, what you bring up is what we call platform shifting, you know, which, you know, Tarnow talked about for, you know, you know, for a long time at NYU and the fact that you're moving that junction of abutment, implant and bone away from the bone, you know, so you're moving it a little bit away. But what I think this implant has done for me in looking at, you know, many, many internal tapers versus the tapered plus, which is a platform shifted you know, 15 degree bevel, bringing it in uh, one platform size. And that's really all platform shifting means is we're, we're bringing those edges in and moving down one size in our prosthetic uh, uh, component. Uh, some systems use one prosthetic deal, one prosthetic component, and that, that platform shift gets greater, you right. know, the wider the implant uh, right. gets. Bio has three different platforms in the, in the tapered plus. So you have the 3.0, the 3.8, and the 4.6. What I have seen is that the protocol has to change just a little bit, and that when I started placing these implants, crestal, really slightly subcrestal, I found that that bone started to go over the bevel, and I found that the bone and the soft tissue maintenance was then starting to be clinically noticeable over the tapered, uh, just the tapered internal. and. Uh, some people would tell you like, well, the tapered internal, if you place it crestal, it's gonna lose some bone because of the laser lock. And I, I totally disagree with that because the, the, the studies will show you that not only does the laser lock allow for soft tissue attachment, but it also is a great attachment for bone. Their old shorty, the 7.5, 5875, when it was really tapered, they actually, at the end of that, and they, you can still buy it, they laser locked the whole damn thing. Yeah because of the, you know, you, you think about laser locking the whole thing, you're adding surface area. Right. You know, you're adding more bone to implant contact. And when you add that, you have the ability to have more initial uh, and, and secondary stabilization through the healing of it. But for the tapered plus for me, getting it down below the bone and being conscious of, if you're in between teeth, being conscious of uh, where you are as compared to the adjacent CEJs and the ability to create papilla. a yeah, yeah. To, to, to maintain papilla and to uh, maintain that soft tissue bulk, you know, whether it's facial or lingual or anything like that. That has been a big difference. And I look now, I've been placing the tapered plus exclusively for right about four years, ever yeah. since it's ever since it's come out. So it's and a game changer. I, I hate that word. You know, like, <laughs> like game, game, game changer. Game changer is like uh, uh, bringing a relief pitcher in and okay, just mowing so, it but down. that's why I ask it. But, it's like game changer means that you've totally shift your practice away from one way of doing things and doing it a different way. So that's our, probably. I mean, I, I I get that part, and uh, uh, and I, you know, so part of when I went from the tapered internal to the tapered plus was most of it was uh, the full movement was mostly for inventory management. Like I was like, yeah. It's easier to maintain one. It's easier to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the platform shift allowed me to get rid of the 5.8 prosthetic components. So, right. you know, this is the thing we talk about is that the implant design can have an impact on what we're seeing at 5, 10, 15 years, and even further out. But, and that's where I think we see good implant designs really kind of shine. But we also feel like that these quote unquote subcrestally placed style platform with the bevel, we see that the surgical protocols drive us to place them slightly. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, that when you started having that system available, of course now you can place it subcrestal because it's designed your, to your prosthetic components or, now you right. can actually get them in and out because right, you've got right. room for that. Whereas with a you know flat to flat straight connection it's harder to work subcrestal, even if you maintain bone, you know? So this allows you to go more, do you think, so I guess the question is, do you think that it was a surgical protocol change 
versus the design. And I mean that you probably can't say, oh, I know it's this or it's that. But I mean, what, what's your personal? No, you're 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 on the exact you're on the exact trail because uh, if you think about that, the, the parallel walled uh, uh, tapered uh, implant, having that junction all the way out at the end, like you know any kind of emergence profile out of your abutment is lost at being placed uh, right. subcrestal. Exactly. And so when you create the tapered plus, you know, you get more of those, you're able to use those subcrestal because literally, you know, sometimes in the aesthetic zone, if you were going to use a, a tapered Im implant without the, the platform shift, like sometimes you had to remodel the bone yep. that's right. to, to, to create the emergence you were wanting to. And that's yep. not... Conic shaping, that's right. bad news. Yeah. It, well, it is long-term bad news. Because <laughs> yeah. like, right. anytime you shrink the bone, eventually the tissue's going to shrink as well. Yeah. So right. you've got to do that. So that whole thing, I think, you know, the chicken or the egg, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it, it's hard to say. And it, it, I think it comes hand in hand, right. you know, but, you know, um, you know, all that platform shifting, you know, there were companies that adapted it earlier and had lines that were, you know, there. Um, and, you know, some people say, oh, that company's late to the game. And sometimes I say, well, you know, we've seen plenty of implant designs that uh, were hyped. And then after you had five years, you're like, crap. Yeah, so that, some yeah. so sometimes uh, I think that that you know, not just that. not just by our horizons like sometimes you you know if someone comes out with this greatest thing like it's not that bad you know you can start the design of what you want to do sure. but before you release it like you want to see some studies like you want to see what it's what's what's right. going on and you know now it's impossible to get five and ten years right away and if sure, you wait sure. that long sure. I mean you've lost a lot of revenue in, in jumping I mean into somebody's got to so. jump on the on the Some, someone has to do yeah. it somebody's yeah. got to be the well, first we just, we just wonder how much you know as we've seen some studies out there where you know they've looked at soft tissue thickness mm -hmm. and they've said you know that maybe that blood supply and soft tissue thickness are really what's maintaining our bone and I think we've kind of always known that you needed blood supply but I just wonder if maybe that the more subcrestal we're placing an implant the more soft tissue thickness, you know, in right. other words, if we put a three millimeters or two millimeters subcrestal, just as a for instance, that gives us essentially three millimeters, you know, say we have a one millimeter thick tissue, well, that gives us three millimeters of tissue potentially before right. we get to bone. And I don't know, I think that's maybe why immediates work so well, because we're already putting them so right. far subcrestal or so far sub, right. sub tissue, I would say. And I, I don't know if anybody really, like you say, knows the answer to that. But but you're seeing after four years, uh, better bone maintenance. Better better soft hands tissue down bone hands yeah. down. Like I can I can tell you that it's better. Yeah. You no, know there, there's no doubt. Cupping about Cupping to the first thread is going away. I, my personal opinion today is if uh, uh, if you see cupping, it, you're in trouble. If you if you see any bone loss today, I it's you don't have to have it anymore. I love Thank it. you. Well, 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 will, it. You, will you have you it sometimes? You don't have to have. You don't have to have it. I like I, that. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. You and, don't. But. You stop! Wait, wait, just a minute here, because people, if we talk about this, stop accepting one millimeter of bone loss right. in the first year. Stop accepting it. We don't need to have it. You heard it from mm -mm. a guy. Mm -mm. Yeah, he's placed a couple. He's placed a couple of implants. Yeah, just a few. Right. Yeah. Don't accept it and figure out why you got the bone loss, and don't jump from system to system. Yeah. I think the first thing you need to do is understand tissue driven surgery you know soft yeah. tissue and hard tissue surgery you, yeah. you know it's like you said in your course you're teaching patient teaching new dentists that have, are, have very limited experience maybe they have a lot of experience but maybe they have limited experience to place implants in thick connective tissue yeah. bone abundant bone abundant bone cases and why because you're going to see those good results and then you're going to know what is normal Right. You know, right, and so that's good. I really like it. Now, what I wanna, about, I wanna, and what about laser one, lock? What about well, laser? let me yeah. let me go back with really quick. You know, so <laughs> okay, Carl Mesh, you know, wrote the book, which is now ten plus years old. Yeah, you know, and you know, what he taught at the time was all we knew. Absolutely, yeah. it's all we knew. So, so when he when he taught us that uh, we could we should accept bone loss down to the first thread, it. That's all we knew. That's right. And, exactly. and we, and, but and it's he good to know he did, why he said that. Yes. yes. Yeah, because... Well, and it came from a paper from 1984. Correct. You know, Zarb's paper. It was yes. like 0.2 per year. You know, I mean, these are all things right. that were from the 80s. Like right. you say, it wasn't bad. It was right. just that's... We didn't know any so, better. So now that we, you know, as technology and uh, literature and people that publish come to the surface, we find that... And 
it's hard to look at retrospective studies because they're like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to look at this study and it's it, it's, mm. a, it's a 10-year study. Well, the, it's a 10-year study on an implant that already is kind of antiquated. Right. You know, so if the, if those features in it in uh, that have lasted 10 years on this and we tweak it a little bit, like I'm looking, I'm looking to the future of looking at uh, uh, tapered plus and stuff and saying, you know what. Mm. Uh, uh, we may, we're not going to accept bone loss anymore. Right. Matter of fact, you know, there's a lot of cases where I've seen bone growth. Yeah. You know, and not maybe vertical, but like bone growth in and over that bevel. Yes. You know, and we all know that if you maintain the bone, the soft tissue stays. And the new paradigm shift is when I went through MISH, it was just about function. Yes. Like get your implants in, get them some teeth back. You know, aesthetics is lower end. And we, I think we've talked about this last time, like yeah. aesthetics is important. Right. You know, like our patients are more aesthetically driven today than they ever were. And that's why when you look at uh, implant education today, it's starting with soft tissue. That's right. You know, you, you got to start with the final restoration in mind, but you got to start with the biotype. Like, you yeah. know, what do we have to work with? Because even though we have abundant bone, if we've got a thin biotype, we've got a difficult case. Exactly. And then throw it in, throw it in a, into an, a, an aesthetic challenging cases with a high lip line. Yeah. Like, that's not where you need to start. That's right. That's I think, not. That, that's, I think that's not where, where that, you need to start. Where that uh, you know ITI treatment guide. I'm sure you've seen where yep. it's got like all the. I love that for this because it's so for a novice especially. Yep. No, it's a great. I mean, great sometimes thing. you know you get to go through that checklist and say you know like you said, high lip line, thin biotype. It doesn't matter what you do in these cases. They're going to be a huge challenge, and you need to know. And I'm sure that's what you, I'm sure you guys uh, are teaching. And the, and the young implantologist uh, or any implantologist that really understands that statement is that if you really understand it, you've got to have the conversation with the patient on the front side. Thank it's you. like, listen, I can't meet your expectations because biology is working against us here. Yeah, right. and you could show them that. Right, yeah, right. I think people and that's, get that. Yeah. And that's about that's about doing a proper workup too, like I having agree. having proper photos to be able mm-hmm. to show them. Say, listen, you smile, I see gums. Look at this perio probe. I can see the gum. I put it in your sulcus. Yeah. I can see the perio probe. Like you have the two biggest risk factors that that you could have. Right. right. You know. You're and already. Then, and then if you would if you would to get diabetes and start smoking again, like it would be even better. Right. You know. Yes. Like, <laughs> I know. Exactly. I know. <laughs> but like if you if you set the stage. Uh, and make them own their own condition. Yes. yes. Then it's a lot better off. So let's 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 talk a little bit about short implants because I know that we are big, huge short implant fans. Uh, recently, uh, we released an episode, episode fifty nine. If you want to go back and listen to that, um, uh, I Jomi uh, released a uh, really a fantastic um, study um, implants that were six to nine millimeters long, tracked from 60 to 229 months, 1,300 implants tracked in function, 98.7% success rate. And um, I know you got excited because BioHorizon put the first shorty in your hands. Yeah, the first mm-hmm. new design, New right? design. Yep. You put in the first one. You first put in one. the first one. Dude. And that is... Well done. Dude, well done. That's awesome. Dude. That's a big that deal, was, man. That was a lot that's of fun. That's a big deal. That was a lot of fun. Big yeah. I was like, dude, I was giddy. Whenever I saw I that know, on your I Facebook know. feed, I was like, dude, that is so cool. Yeah. So what I want to ask you, one, I know shorties are here. They're going to stay here because they are successful. We don't have to argue that. No. It's a game changer from a standpoint, I feel like, in, my, in our practices, you know, when Craig Mish gets up and says, before I consider bone grafting, I see if I can get a short implant yeah. in. Yeah, to hear that, Craig say that, it's That's right. a big deal well, because, you know, yeah. and with respect to Carl, who was a grafter, and even Craig is a massive grafter uh, for somebody like that. So for you, I think this is awesome because you're immediately employing uh, a, a short implant into your, uh, you know, arsenal. But what I want to hear is then the technical aspect of this. Uh, John and I... Um, uh, we're going to be speaking tomorrow on in, is insertional torque value meaningless. I know that you mentioned that you have in your program you're monitoring ISQ because it's a true, mo- and we'll talk about biology and how that monitors osteointegration. And we're not saying to throw away I, um, insertional torque value, not at all. Um, but I want to hear a little bit about what's your experience with ISQ and these short implants. Um, you know, so the new the new the new short implant, uh, you know, BioRisons has not been 
totally new to the short implant, but they did a they did a short tapered in the the four six seven five and the five eight seven five, and you could get that in you know tapered or tapered plus, which was you know whichever your you know per preference is, uh, and to me the the thread pattern was uh, uh, was it a, square. The original one was not. It, it, it had a really. It, it really had too much of a taper, in my opinion. Okay. And we 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 lacked uh, uh, enough bone to implant contacts. Uh, okay. So the new tapered pl- the new tapered uh, uh, short implant is not a lot of taper at all. It looks the the five eight the it's five more eight. Straight wall, it right? it, it kind of looks like a, an look oil like, barrel. Right. You know, yeah. It kind of yeah, looks, yeah, like, yeah. looks like an oil barrel with. A more aggressive uh, thread pattern, yeah. and uh, and and platform shifted so we can uh, you know get those benefits uh, if right. we so choose. And now we have a we have a four six six and a four six seven five and a five eight six and a five eight uh, um, uh, seven five in this in this new short. And what I found, like the first one I placed, I mean I didn't really know. Uh, there's a new drill protocol that comes with it. It's a yeah. step it's a step drill instead of a tapered drill. Yep. And uh, the two lines on there for the two sizes, the sure. six and the seven five, and when I put them in, you know, uh, the first one went in the mandible, and I used the drills to depth, and uh, you know, the whole protocol, and boy, like I had to finish the the, the top eighth of it uh, with the ratchet. So, uh, so the, the, high the, insertional the, torque. Yeah. So um, you know, so I set my I set in those particular cases I set my torque value on the that W and H at forty five. And uh, they're they're hitting torque before my final resting point. So I'm at 45. Literature say I could easily load it or put a healing abutment on whatever I wanted to do. And then what we were doing was we and we've we've been gathering this data for a while. Now the shorties I don't have any restored because they haven't been out long enough to restore. Sure. But we're gathering the initial initial torque values and the initial ISQ, ISQ. and then the final torque value. And the final ISQ as we drive those in, and we're seeing on average, uh, when we were stopping at the 45, we were somewhere in that 70 to 72 in the ISQ. Yeah. When I finish it with the ratchet uh, to get it in, sometimes we're at you know 60 plus, uh, you know, in uh, torque, but our ISQ is jumping up to 80s, wow. you know, in in, in the wow. low in the low 80s. Wow. Now, how does that you know, uh, you know, how does that uh, relate you know to restorability and 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 stuff well, you know, anything we don't about, know yet yeah yeah but, yeah but, but still yeah that but, should tell you that everything's going to go right. right so we have we have this data and then when we go to uncover these you know we'll isq them and we'll see you know we'll see mm-hmm. did it stay the same did it increase you know and over time time will tell us how important the isq is because you know, truthfully i mean we know there's no there's no doubt the science is there yeah right they're, 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 we're not doubting the science right. is there it's you know, it's really like changing the old guard, and I, I look at it as like, you know, I don't want to be the new guard, but I don't want to be the old guard. I want to be the person that's grounded in science and, and does what, you know, we need to do to do that. So, you know, we, we're tracking them, and, you know, after a year and a few thousand of these things, we'll check it out. The nice thing about the clinic here is it's really easy to create, like, We've got 1,800 implants already in our deal. Like, Start like ISQ and all. And we're going to have data for what I think are, is going to be really important papers in the future. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like, I, I, like, like yeah. our, our faculty and our team is set up, and we've been gathering the data since day one. Uh, and we could probably publish papers on what data we've already gathered. Sure. But I think it's a what we're planning is a lot longer look yeah. at them. Well, that's the thing, is that these longer-term studies, like the one I quoted earlier, 60 to 229 months, that really makes your head turn. Yeah, that's when it gets real is when you start and, seeing it. And the 1,300-plus implants, like that's a real sample size. That's a real sample yes. size. And right. you know what's great about that study, too, is that it was done in a private practice without right. any sponsor, right. you yeah. know, which is huge. Yeah, and I think that that's, again, from BioRizon's standpoint, with, with a new implant like the short, they want to see that type of follow-up. And, and I think that they're doing that. Right. It's wonderful that, that's they're, great. that they're supporting it right. in that way. You know, what we're interested in, just like you are, is the relevance of ISQ, you know, right. in the long run. And I think, like you say, the science is there supporting that it's useful. The question is going to be, you know, maybe more on how implant designs affect ISQ. That's right. something that is really still not it's, really it's, understood well. Right. Is, you know, some of the things that increase your torque don't necessarily increase your ISQ. And some of the things that affect your ISQ don't always, it right. doesn't always correlate. 
That's you know, interesting. So, so one of the interesting things that we've been measuring is, uh, uh, so we just set ours at 45. You know, I mean, you can choose whatever, but like we're, we set ours at 45 as our initial torque value. That and means your seating torque. Yes. 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 And we're, you know, we're keeping track of whether, you know, the implant goes. And it's got that nice chart where it tells you even if you get to your final resting point and you didn't hit the 45, I still know what torque value was the max compared on the chart. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we take that, but when those that torque out before we get to where we want it to be, you know, we're measuring in millimeters and then we're measuring in quarter revolutions How much to, to get there there. Okay. And we're tracking the ISQ for every quarter uh, turn. Oh, so like what it. you're talking about is you're talking about, okay, implant design. So for every, for every quarter ratchet that I do in the BioRizon systems, every full revolution drives at one millimeter deep, you know, so for, so it's basically every quarter of millimeter. millimeter. How is much it, more is ISQ does it go Correct. Yeah. And, it, and it is. Because essentially it should go up because that measures the true true right. stability of right. the implant. And it is. It is. So, are you seeing it go up? so it, that's how it's happening. It is it is how it's happening. I and mean how much we, is it? We have thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so in the far, shorts. So we, so in the shorts. Now yeah. we're doing it we're actually doing it for all the implant lines sure. and uh, uh, and the the course they let it we don't we only place the taper plus on our course. So we have like a like we have a ton of good data coming in. We just we just started with uh, the, you know, we've done three courses where we've tracked the ISQ because we now have those machines that let us you sure. know, gather that data. But you know, it goes to implant design and that short so BioRizon has the short implant with this new thread design and they also just released the four point two. Mm. Which is a different thread design, still platform shifted. Mm -hmm. The four two shares the three eight platform. Um, but it now has this more aggressive thread pattern. And so we're placing the 4.2 along with the rest of the tapered plus line, and we're going to track and see if the 4.2 with the new thread design is going to make any difference in initial... This is good stuff. Well, let me, let, yeah. me, let me ask you this just real pointed question about what we've just talked about. Okay, so knowing what you know, knowing what you're seeing, if you're seeing ISQ high with an implant design, when you when you the implant goes to depth, do you feel that we should be careful with how high the torque is? I know there's been a lot of discussion over the years about about torque and high torque and low torque and what matters. A lot of studies have shown maybe it doesn't matter. But okay, let's assume the ISQ is in the good range. Okay, let's call it 75, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. And okay, so if your ISQ is good, should we be aiming with implant design to lower the torque required to achieve higher, higher, ISQ. higher ISQ. ISQ. Do you, th I know this is theoretical, but I just think you're the kind of guy I could ask that question to because you place a lot of the implant. stress that takes off <clears throat> the components and maybe yeah, bone. Not, I mean, even just not breaking stuff when you're putting implants. I mean, do, you know, I mean we break stuff, dude. I mean, you don't break stuff, but <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. You're I don't, don't break forever. anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what do you latch locks last forever? Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you think, yeah. man? I mean, do you yeah. think that we should be trying to, if, if we, if ISQ is established as like, okay, this is really the measure we're looking for, should we be trying to decrease torque or should we be trying, because marketing tells us, has told us for you, oh, torque, And torque, every torque. implant company has done everything to try to increase. Well, I think, yeah. Well, I think we've, we've been torque, torque, torque because it was the only metric we had. Totally. Sure. Now totally. we have this second metric that, uh, you know, because, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a fan of the reverse torque test to to, nope. to, to judge a, an implant stability. Nope. Like, uh, like you know what what I what I do most often is what the if I have a metal healing abutment on there, I tap on it with the end there of you a go. mirror hand. That's exactly because what I do, man. My, my feel, my feel, and and my audible sound that I hear from it, I yeah. can tell where it's at. And that's been research proven. It's yeah, that it actually works. <laughs> which yeah. is sounds the crazy, tap technique it is it's, 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 it sounds low rent, and it sounds yeah, like, it's not. Uh, no. but it, but it, but, but it's, it's not. Legit. It's legit. I think that. I'm still a fan of good uh, uh, initial torque values, uh, and I don't know. Well, if I, I think there's something. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I would want to decrease those, even if you know we could maintain. Well, the same how ISQs. low is too low? I guess is the question, yeah, though. I don't know. Like for me, five, ten, twenty. Is it just when you can? Is it just uh, when you? Well, can I don't know. Because I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I know. know. Is it just high enough that it doesn't spin? 
Yeah, you uh, get a healing. Well, I mean, what is the you know what's the torque value of you being able to do it with your hands? It's seven? fifteen-ish, right? You oh, can't get more than fifteen. Five to yeah, fifteen. Yeah, you're you know, probably going to hit. That's seven, seven eight percent on, on the average person could probably put that in there, yeah. and that's kind of my definition of a spinner in my practice. Like, you know, you I go, I, I have I have minimal torque value. You know, D three, D four bone, whatever I'm going into. You know, when I go to put that cover screw on, if I if I can't turn the implant. You know, I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to put right. anything on top of it. Right. But I'm. I'm definitely not. I'm going to leave it and let it integrate because most of the time it just works. I may give it a few extra sure. months. You know, whatever it is. But I still like. I'm not a. My in my opinion, I'm not a. I'm not that much of a believer in. Uh, torque necrosis. Like I, I'm. Yeah. I'm a, a pressure necrosis. What I am a 100% believer is in heat. Like heat. Heat's the killer. And one of the things that I think implant dentists do very poorly, and that is, I mean, listen, dentists by nature, we're cheap. Yeah, man. Speak, oh, speak to know, the mic oh, here. Yeah. I yeah. know where you're you going know, we're, we're, we're cheap. Yeah. Uh, but being cheap, new surgical drills are expensive. Yeah, but they you need know, to be replaced they every half. Yeah, I know so exactly the number on yeah. each drill, and we mark it down. Yeah, you got to yeah. keep track we, of that. We have you the, guys, you we know, Horizon has that, man. We they have their own built-in nice chart. Built-in chart. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you that uh, uh, I went through a period where, you know, I had some team members that didn't track it, didn't feel like it. And for me, you know, I work out of about five surgical kits. Right. So our kits you know, now have huge uh, Sharpie marks on one, two, three, yeah, four, five. Yeah. The the charts are in the deal, yeah. one, two, three, four, yeah. five, you know. Yeah. And it's even harder with the, the, the guided surgery kit because you got four lengths and four deals. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's really difficult to track. But it could be the most important thing because uh, we did have a spell where there was a, uh, there was a, there was a drill series in there where it was, they dulled quicker than, than anyone thought. And I had a... Uh, I had more issues than not in that drill system, and it's super, super important that we use sharp drills. Oh, thank you so that much. That we for use uh, that we use a good solid surgical. I believe in high speed drilling under copious irrigations, and I I chill my saline. Mm. You know, because mm -hmm. it's, it's three degrees C is all you have to raise the 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 the, the bone to start denaturing protein. Sure. Like that, like that's a bad thing. So you know, in and out irrigation. You know, yep. proper you know proper drilling speeds with the proper drills, yep. and keeping a sharp drill. If you use good surgical protocol, I don't see any reason why we should have bone loss. That's yeah, good. That's I where, just don't see that. And that's why that. you're not. Again, you're much more worried about that than torque. Yeah. Much and more worried. But let me and just one more quick follow-up question on that. Assuming that you have a implant that you can't turn, but it torques in low. Okay, mm -hmm. you, you can't. It's not a spinner. Right. If your ISQ is awesome. Right. How do you feel about loading? Jury's still out. I mean, you know, listen. Um, Mike Norton says it isn't. <laughs> you know, listen. I I don't, I don't really have an opinion yet because I don't have. I know. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have ears of the ISQ. There's not a lot out. No, no, I, no, no. I, there's not a lot. There's not a lot. And and for me. But I think it's a good place to start thinking about. And I think so. Dennis. Yeah. I think listen. If you're listening to the show right now and you're a placer, you really need. To start thinking about yeah. how am I going to incorporate this into my yeah, practice? Start thinking about start ISQ. Thinking about Be it familiar with it. Understand it. Um, but we need to shift gears. Okay, John. Get, the, the cliffhanger <laughs> about this whole show. You guys, are the, you guys are the best because you get. You know, I, I rarely get to talk clinical stuff with know, with, right. with people that, that care about clinical stuff, and uh, Listen, we could really this we is... could really talk till tomorrow. <laughs> so. Yeah, we could. You know, because <laughs> here's the thing: is that I really want to know because there was some things that have been said. Um, on forums, and I, I'm not a huge forum fan because it's hard to articulate oh. something in words, yep. 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 and that's why that's why you're on our show. Is is can you eliminate acrylic from your implant oh, practice? God. And 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 I want to hear. You know what we're talking about here is that we're talking about eliminating overdentures. Yeah, or just uh, hybrid prosthetics. Or hybrid prosthetics with acrylic. With acrylic. Yeah. I will tell you, in, in my private practice, um, I have eliminated uh, the the hybrid denture, uh, the, screw, the screwed in hybrid denture. You the screwed in bar wrapped in acrylic. Correct. Okay. Not okay. over denture. Not, Not over denture. Not okay. over denture because those patients that need flange support for lip support to give you the profile and the look that you're looking like, 
There are cases where zirconia will not get you where you want to go. Uh, Thank you. There, 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 just, there just is. I mean, if you've done enough Wait, of these. so did you just say you can't use zirconia on every case? I never said you had to use zirconia I on know, every case. I know, uh, you didn't. But there are you, people out there. Uh, there are people, people out there, Justin, know, that are saying that, that this say, is the cure We didn't say you said it. Uh, I know, I know. We just want to make... He's a good friend of mine. Well, there's no, others. No, but no, I, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I think it's just important because, you know, again, not newbies, okay? Right. They're getting a lot of marketing. Right, And they're right. going, okay, I'm going to use zirconia, use zirconia, use zirconia. And then they're having problems, I think, with these anterior cantilevers mm -hmm. that they're having to create and especially in limited vertical situations it's creating problems yep. correct it correct. can right right <laughs> so we just need to be thinking about that right there's there's a lot of there's a lot to think about when we talk about full arch and let's, let's split it up into because it's easier to talk when you split it from the mandible to the maxilla let's talk about the maxilla because that's what affects lip support and that's really our decision making so let's talk about your protocol for choosing what restoration, and, and keep it simple for the most part, what restoration you're going to use in the maxilla. Start with, start with this patient, a patient that comes in with a full complement of felling teeth. Terminal dentition. Terminal dentition. So, I mean, my first, my first go-to in anybody that actually comes in in that situation mm -hmm. is this. Where does eight and nine fit in their face? Yes, that's Love all it. I care about. Like, Love it. it's where, facially generated treatment planning. Where is the where does eight and nine fit in their face? If eight and nine are in their face correctly in their failing dentition, and I, and that's the, you know, that's the the position I want to put that in. Right. Then now now it's simple enough. I can go I can go to I can go to my cone beam CT. I can measure from the incisal edge to the bone. I can decide whether I have enough space for for whatever kind of restoration that I, you know that I want to uh, uh, place. Most of the time, in a failing dentition, I really see no reason why you would need to go to uh, uh, having a flange support because generally you haven't lost that much bone right. in that in that failing dentition. The flange support comes in to play in the long term edentulous patient right. that uh, uh, yep. has lost so much bone in, in both in both dimensions, both vertically and buccally, so that the cantilever is out there. And the cantilever in, in zirconia doesn't give you the upper lip support that you need. So even yeah, though so you, right underneath the nose, it's you underneath the lip. nose. So your your profile gets your profile gets out of whack, right. and you and and you can't reproduce that in and zirconia. And your flexibility is a nightmare as well. It, it, it is, and that's my issue. Is that's why I've been able to eliminate the hybrid denture from that is because. Whether you cantilever out with a denture with a with a hybrid denture or you cantilever out with zirconia, if it's fixed, you still have the same cleansability problem with with either one of those Thank solutions. Exactly. So, that particular patient, I go to a removable over denture because of the cleansability and the use of the flange. So sure. that's where it's good. Know, that's that's my criteria. Right. Well, it's my opinion. You I know? think it's good. Well, I think I, it's yeah. modern, and I think it's good. So you know, on a patient that has you know, been in a denture and they, they've had horizontal and vertical loss mm -hmm. in the maxilla, there's been some talk about some different restorations that even provide. You've got what you're seeing here is just a, a bar with locators tapped into it. Then there's the unsplinted implant cases that we're hearing more about today because there is some good research and some good success rates with four, maybe five, six implants that are unsplinted not just locator attachments, but conus. Yeah, that type of design. Yeah, so right, a telescopic right, right. A coping, more, more, more challenging. challenging. Yeah, Are you doing uh, any of that? You know, I've done some conus, uh, and I, I had good success with it. Uh, what you're showing on the screen is a, you know, is a milled CAD CAM bar with some locators tapped in. So my criteria for the bar versus freestanding implants and, you know, and OD Secures is that... Uh, um, what are my, what is my bone implant contact with the implants that I have? You know, because in a severely resorbed maxilla, do I have nothing but nines and you know maybe sixes? You know, you know shorter implants. You know, maybe more of them, versus even though you know some people, 
Some people can lose half their bone and still have room for a 4.6.12. Isn't it unreal? It's unreal. It's unreal. You know? And yeah. you're like, oh, well, a 4.6, I can put anything on there. Well, no, we still lost 12 other millimeters. Like, we still sure. have a bunch of other right. stuff to, right. to, to make up. So the size and the... The size of the implant matters to me, whether I want to whether I want to full arch stabilize them by hooking them all together, mm -hmm. which is proven technology. Sure. You know, or I have adequate sized implants to put them solo. This is and the Carl Mission you're speaking of. I know. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, you know, a lot of the things that he said are still applicable today. Some of the things have been proven that there's a little, there might be a better solution for sure. it. But, uh, uh, you know, what I, what I don't, what I have kicked to the side, which was hard to do when you're, you know, you've been drank that Kool-Aid, is that bigger, stronger, better. Like, like I used to place a ton of five eights. Yeah. Not a lot of five eights anymore. And let me ask you this too. Talking about size, is haven't we seen an overall decrease in? Let's say take eight and nine. Like I used to put fives. Right. In eight and nine. Used to be fill the whole. Fill the hole. Yeah. Like, right. What now are we that's changing? Well, if you're if you're gonna do it immediately, like you gotta fill the whole that's damn right. hole. Right. You know? so, um, yeah. So now we've seen a shift back away from that because we want to see more. Well, I, I've 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 landed in the middle yeah. with the tapered plus because I can do the four six, which fills the size better. Yeah. But brings me to the three eight platform, which allows me to much yeah, better yeah. emergence yeah. profile. Yeah, when I had better. just the tapered, the four six was too damn wide, and when yeah. I went we're doing the same things, I couldn't do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. it, it, so, real, the last thing maybe I want to ask you about going back to the the dentalist cases is we we've covered that zirconia is a great material. You've talked about hey, I'm using that. I'm eliminated my acrylic dentures, but. In between the unsplinted, say, you know, locator type of case, OD secure type of case, and the full arch fixed, mm -hmm. is there another option for the patient who has deficient posterior ridge in the maxilla? You, you, you would normally maybe say, I do a hybrid. Okay, maybe the patient can't afford a hybrid. Um, but you don't have the ability to place parallel implants mm -hmm. because they've lost posterior bone. Common case. So... Is there a middle ground be where you can deal with, or what are you, I mean, I know there's several different systems out there that right. report to be the answer for those cases, whether it be angled locators, whether it be, you know, locators, FTX or RTX type of systems. Right. You know, what, what are your thoughts on, is there a middle ground system? This is a tough system? one for us. Well, yeah. so I look at, um, you know, the number of implants you place. And if you're doing a locator case and you're trying to do them on, you know, individuals without a bar or anything, like, you know, parallelism is everything. And as we talk about the, the resorb maxilla, the parallelism as you move forward into the pre-maxilla, you get that angulation and the ability to upright them and create them parallel is very, very difficult. The picture you have on the, he has on the laptop here is of a bar, and I will use that bar in, a, in cases where I've got six or seven implants that I have good bone, but they're, they're, they're not the perfect angles. Yeah, that's so this I'll, case here. So I'll put them in, and the bar saves you from your parallelism, right. but then gives you perfectly parallel locators, which in that particular case right there, I mean, that patient's going to need a crowbar to take those out if you put anything yeah, more, she has to have, anything yeah, more exactly. than, a, than a blue insert. Right. Oh, you know? it's what she has. Right. It's crazy. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, I got a patient that I have one of those that carries this little baby spoon around, yep. and she puts it in yeah. there and, 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 do, and knocks it down. Yep. Well, what do you do if they can't afford that prosthetic? Uh, uh, my, my solution is a PMMA. Uh, we we mill. Hmm. We'll do a we'll do a milled PMMA and screw retain it into there. Which in the PMMA I can I can uh, uh, I can account for off angles That's because true. because I'm a multi unit guy. Yeah, yeah, I, we I, are yeah, too. I, I like yep. multi units uh, for a lot of different reasons, which is a whole podcast in itself. But I like the milled PMMA because I don't have a lot in it. I got a hundred twenty dollar puck in it, you know, yeah, right. and, and some time. Some, some time with the, the pink, and you know? and that is uh, that is my stop gap. So until they can move forward, you just tell them that patient you're going to need to replace this once every right? couple and, of years and, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, and the and the beautiful part is that you know they break one or whatever it is. Uh, for one, if you break your PMMA, I think in in less than yeah, a year, then a it tells you a lot about your restorative your your restorative plan to begin you with. You messed up. Uh, it's, it's too thin. You don't yeah, have yeah. enough vertical clearance. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about that is that, that your PMMA. If it takes them two years to, to, to come up with the funds to do the zirconia, whenever they do have the funds, you don't need to see them again until you deliver the zirconia because the computer has the yeah, deal. Very like true. there's there's no additional yeah. there's no additional clinical uh, steps. Yeah, it's a copy. 
it, it, it's a it's a copy mill. Yeah. You know, they changed the milling strategy from PMMA to zirconia. You make it, you send it to me, I deliver it, and I'm done. Well, what I'm hearing you say, and I think it's I think it's very reasonable. It's a good answer. Is there really is no other way to do it except and give put somebody them on a the path right. toward a definitive restoration. Give them a lower cost option that still gets you almost all the way there. And then when they can afford to, when they can afford it, you do it. I treat my plan every patient, every arch, uh, as a fixed final restoration. Now, if we stop, if we stop at a locator, and they can't, aff- and, they, and they can't afford, you know, that's all they can afford. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. but I want to make sure that I, a I have an adequate number of implants to maintain bone throughout yeah. the arch. Yeah. I have an adequate number of implants to eventually uh, go to fixed if I want to. Say the patient has just. If just enough money to go to a PMMA, but obviously not to the zirconia. We just talked about that scenario. But if you work with a lab, I literally have less lab money in a screw retained PMMA than I do uh, in a in a locator denture. You know, because my locator dentures, I like to use. Uh, 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 injection molded. I like to use mm-hmm. Ivo, Ivo base. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, so um, mm-hmm. and then you know, if you go to a bar, like hang on to your butt. Like that's a, that's, that's an expensive. Expen- right. That's an expensive piece of metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, I think that you know this is this is a great discussion because you know not only are you teaching this and it's something that's been, you know, I'm sure your people that are going to your courses are hearing about, but you know, you you've been doing this long enough. You've been because you're referral based. Your predictability matters. Predictability oh. matters like crazy, and I think the difference between you a lot be of yeah, a lot of GPs who are getting into implant placement, who maybe say, because we see again going back to the stupid forums, is we see uh, and then some of the forums are great, but some of them are crazy because people post this crazy stuff and they're like, look it's what so I did. So hard to articulate in words, right? Again, but they'll put a case pictures. up using some material that's a new, sometimes totally unproven, and they'll say, this is what I am doing. Okay, now that's great, and maybe it works perfect for them. And but you know, if you're referral based, you can't introduce a lot of variability and in, in loss of predictability. And you're in what much more in the situation of hey, you've seen what doesn't work, and you can't have stuff not work for your referring docs. No, so that's no. one of the reasons I'm sure you're doing it the way you are. Yeah, you know, I've put a number of implants in over the years, and uh, you know, every single week in my in my practice, I, I, I'm taking something out and replacing it. And it's like, you know, sometimes I'm like, I'm really bad. You know, like, like this, this, I'm not very good. But if you look at my numbers, my numbers are exceed where I should be. But when you get so many of them out there and you have so many of them that were external hex square threaded that, you know, they, they're down to like the fifth yeah. Deal, and I have to look at these and my referral base. And one of the things I do to build that is like, when there's an issue, I take care of it. Yep. Like you know, I graft, I put the new implant, and I put the restoration over it because I don't want my referral base to be burdened by the lab bill. I don't ever want the, like. Sure. Yeah. You know, I'm just I'm it? just gonna take care of it because the next one I'm gonna own from start to finish. Like I don't need you know, if if it's a cement issue, like I definitely am, I'm gonna own the next one. You yeah. Know, because I lose I lose this this piece of I agree I, I, I lose a piece of the predictability and, because and I, I let it go out this is the whole reason why and this is again a whole other show so we can't go down this rabbit hole but it's a <laughs> don't whole don't go there it's the whole reason why we honestly feel bad for a lot of, of surgeons specialist surgeons because they're in an impossible situation they're not oh, trust officially me, able to do the restorative but they can now but well, yeah well it's controversial I guess I would say at best about who's who's owns who owns these different things, and they are in a pickle because they want success on their implant, they want to do more implants, and yet they have these jokers out there putting crap on their implants, right. and then it's coming back to them, and they're trying to decide what they do. So then, so now you have them, you know, scanning the cases, taking the impressions, placing the abutments, sending it, you know, sending it to the sort of doc. And the sort of doc still got, wants to get paid, so it's just a whole other it's a whole other show. But I think it's cool that you have the ability, because you've restored a background, to be able to do both sides and do both sides well. Where if you have a problem, you manage the entire problem, and I would think it would just create a lot less frustration for you in the long run compared to if you're just the surgeon 
and you're kind of there and like you just get what you get from the restorative guy. You know, um, I'm gonna. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, and and I, I do live in that world, and I've had a lot of issues over time in that world. You know, having to fix stuff, and like I said, you know, owning it the second time because I'm not gonna do the same mistake. I want. I read this book called The Pumpkin Plan. Are you familiar with it? No. Mm-hmm. Should read it. It it, uh, it it's a it's a business book called The Pumpkin Plan, and it talks about how to grow a large pumpkin, and how do you grow a large pumpkin in your in your in your garden is over the growing season, you cut all the small pumpkins off right. to grow one big pumpkin. And from my referral base, as I as I grew, as my confidence grew, it's good. You know where it's going, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I know like, exactly. Like, we already know what, what's happening what, here. What I did is, A, for one, I helped, uh, uh, I helped start a, a local laboratory that understands implant dentistry. So, so my referral base so had... So you removed one variable. Yeah, I yeah. did. More like, so, control. That's one so, token. So, so I, 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 yeah. I created a, 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 a barrier. It's like, hey, listen, if you at least send a pro smiles, like you're, you know, I, I know that, that that implant has a fighting chance now. Exactly. You know, uh, you or know. if the impression sucks, you might hear about it. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Well, listen, stuff because like I that. need to hear about it. That's because what that's I'm saying. you know that's what's going that's on. That's what I'm saying. You know, the second was the repeat offender. Right. <laughs> Clipped. <laughs> See ya. And and and, oh, and you think about it. like and if you if you I live in this it. referral base and you're like going, God, I just sent a I just sent a letter to a doc because I'm firing his ass. You yeah. know, yeah. And 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 that sounds terrifying. Mm. But it's liberating, it is, isn't it? It is. Well, it, it, not only, like is, it liber- not only is it liberating, but if your, t- if your team, when you tell your team that you fired Dr. Oh, they're, So-and-so, they're tr- and they're, they're like, screaming. Oh, <laughs> oh, Thank you, you know, so much. You know, you know, but, but also, what it has done, I've been doing, I've been this, in the implant-only office, referral base for going on 11 years now. 11 straight years, I've had year-over-year growth. Mm. And I've trimmed... You know, I, I told, I said earlier today. You know, I worked with, I, I work with eighty-eight docs. That's not true. I only work with about thirty-seven docs today. Those thirty-seven docs send me more than the eighty-eight ever did. That's right. And yeah. I cut yeah. the others out. And you know, man, if, I wish more people got that. I know, but they, Less. they don't. And the, and the lab has adapted the same yeah. thing. Like you think about the lab, the the problems, the problem cases. You know, people are like, oh, that lab sucks. I couldn't do anything. Well, you know. Like ninety five percent of the time, it's not the lab's fault. Absolutely, thank it's, you it's, so it's, much. It's, it's Thank almost, you so It's much. always our fault. Right, because, the dental lab guy. I hope you because heard every that, time yeah. we look at that impression, and the assistant brings it over to you, like, yeah, they'll make that work. Right. If you say that, like, you're an yeah. idiot. It's done. You're an idiot. That's what yeah. scan. That's yeah. why scanning is so great. Yeah. Because yeah. it blows it up ten times, and you can look at it, and like, if you can literally look at that in the face and say, oh yeah, that'll be fine, you'd be like. Yeah. Nah, if there's not. a big black spot in your scan. You can't say it's okay. Right, right. Like, yeah, you can't. Right. That's, no, that's just it. Like yeah. so, the so the swoop or the void in your impression, you're gonna be like, ah, screw it. You know, right? They, they'll make it they'll work. They'll just draw a line. Yeah. That's the same as having a black no data spot on your yeah. scan, exactly. and you would never, you would, <laughs> you would never, never submit that. Yeah, that's right. Like exactly. who's who in their right mind <laughs> thinks that's okay? Yeah. Well, and evidently, uh, according to that study last year, 87 percent of dentists. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Send impressions. Send them for impressions that don't have all the right data. So yeah, let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. I know, we don't, I know. We gotta, okay, one last thing is like, you know, what I want you to do is for our listeners is give them one next level thing that they can do in their, this year, 2018. Mm. What they could do for themselves? Well, it doesn't matter. For their practice, yeah, for, for the their practice implants, themselves. for What's their the, take it to the material, next level. whatever it is. Like this you is know? Justin Moody, Moody's next level thing. You know, I think that you've got to... Um, you got to find something in your practice that re, that that rejuvenates you. You know that makes you want to be a Monday morning person. You mm-hmm. know, and for me, we have we have Friday we have Friday employees and we have Monday employees. And That's good. you know, we all we all like to be Fridays. Like I, I we all love the weekends and stuff. Sure. But I'm a Monday morning guy. Like I'm ready to go back to work. I'm ready to see my team. I'm ready to do things. And you know, if I got I got a good friend of mine that was a great dentist. He bought a practice in rural South Dakota that was so heavy and removable. And he never he never went and got any implant education. So for eight years, like he fought dentures and partials, you know, and eventually it drove him out of dentistry. He hated his job wow. so much. And I tell people, and that's not a that's not uncommon in dentistry for people not to like this job. Yeah. 
So my my you know my uh, pearl would be for 2018 is like find something in your practice that you'd really love to do. Some people it's Invisalign, go get good at it. Take a bunch of courses. Maybe it's endo. Go learn how to do it reliably and predictably. If it's implants and true tooth replacement and getting rid of dentures, partials, and bridges, like uh, then then do that. But bring something back to your job that you like to come to mm. and makes you a Monday morning person. I don't really. It's not one particular thing, but like. Life is also too short. Like, if you really don't like being a dentist and you only do it because it's the only way that you could uh, uh, make the kind of money that you do, I would still tell you, go get a different job. I think you're right. Yeah. Because because the, the only people that are really suffering are you and your home life and your peop- and your, right. and your team. But ultimately, the person that's suffering is the is the patient because they're not getting your best. That's yeah. good. You know, yep. so find well, something you like to do. And John, if, close if, us out. Bring yeah, us home. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you very much for being on the show today. Oh, for sure. Always good to talk That's to a, you. It's I, an like, honor. Like you say, we could we could talk geek stuff for days. The last um, show we did was an hour and a half. Long. I know. We just kind of get oh, going, right. and it's good stuff, man. But um, tell tell everybody too how they can get involved with what you're doing with your with implant education. Sure. Uh, where do they go? Uh, implantpathway.com. Okay. You know, uh, you can go to my website, justinmoodydds.com, and you can uh, you can find those things. But for me, um, you know, I've been very blessed in my career. You know, I had a, I had a, I had a great first 10 years. I, you know, I built five dental offices and did the GP thing. Uh, the last 10 years, I've been placing implants at a crazy rate in this referral-based, you know, a model, which has been great. The rest... I'm just starting to write that chapter, and that and that chapter is uh, uh, mentorship and giving back and, and 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 helping people do what I did. And Implant Pathway is uh, uh, one of the ways that uh, is really re- is really what I'm building to to do that with. I mean, I I've like I said, I've had a blessed career. I've had the opportunity to uh, uh, mentor some people and make a difference in their life, and I found that. Uh, that's what I want to do yeah. in, the, in, the, in the next chapter. So how we write that and how we move on is, uh, you know, it's still uh, a work in progress. But I, I, think we're, I think we're headed to the right direction. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, well, if you're interested in what uh, Dr. Moody's doing, what Justin's doing, check him out. And, uh, and we'll definitely be, uh, you know, always listening to what you've got going on because you're one of those people that we kind of love, love having a little finger on that pulse of what you're doing because we feel like it's exciting and it is kind of redefining the way that we look at um, implant dentistry, especially as GPs. And so we appreciate all that you brought to the table and for uh, your involvement too in Voices of Dentistry. Um, if you guys uh, like what you're seeing, uh, give us a comment, uh, give us a like, uh, get hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Let us know if you want to hear more about any of these topics we've discussed today. Uh, once again, we'll be, bring, be, we'll be bringing more good content to you from the Voices of Dentistry Conference 2018. All right, man. So great episode. I mean, it was really enlightening. I mean, I told you he surprised me because really when we asked him to do this interview, he he came, he really wanted to – he kind of made me think that he was going to trash acrylic overdentures. Job, right, right. You know? Because there's and, been and, a kind of a popular move to say, oh, well, you know, all you need is zirconia and you can do everything with zirconia. Right. And, and he made right. it clear that, you know, there's a place <clears throat> for – and it's all – again, it's based on what he's told us before – it's based on prosthetic treatment planning, and that's the reason we respect Justin so much. Is well, because he went and he, did he the John. Coy- he'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. He'll tell you that his training at Coy Institute or what? What do they Coy call Coy Center? That now? I think. Yeah. Coy Center out there, and you guys know that we're spear people and Coy and spear and all that kind of stuff is kind of the same philosophy. Yeah, it's all good stuff. <laughs> it's all good stuff, and but it's advanced prosthetic training that led Justin to understand. Um, what and how he does his implant therapy for full arch cases. John, I'll let you close the show with some some more thoughts and and uh, and give a shout out to our sponsor for this episode. Yeah, definitely want to just remind you to go check out uh, Justin's stuff. You know, just want to plug him. You know, go check out their podcast, Dentist Implants and Worms. Uh, Implant Pathway, we've talked about before. It's a great place uh, uh, that you can learn more about dental implants. We appreciate what he's doing out there. It's inspired us in our own pursuit to uh, try to create a good quality dental implant continuum with restorative driven implants. And so we we really feel um, you know connected to him in a, in a very positive way because of uh, the fact he's trying to do it right. And there's a lot of people out there who, who maybe aren't doing it as right. So we really appreciate Justin. 
Um, definitely want you guys, if you're liking what we're, what we're doing, if you, uh, enjoying, uh, listening to our show, if this added something to your day or to your knowledge, uh, we want you to give us your feedback and especially to give us some reviews, check us out on Facebook, review us there, or review us on, uh, on iTunes or Apple podcasts is now what it's called. Uh, that's the place where most people find out about dental podcasts. They may search that on Apple uh, podcast or iTunes. So if you would give us a review on that, that's five stars, man, we'd really appreciate that because that gets the word that's out awesome. about Thank us. You. Tell your friends mm-hmm. about what we're doing. Uh, get people uh, who you know are passionate about uh, learning uh, to, uh, to check us out because uh, that's how we grow. Um, we've got some, as Wes said earlier, we've got some pretty exciting stuff coming up uh, later this year. Uh, but uh, as always, you know, our goal is to try to uh, bring your dentistry to the next level, bring our dentistry to the next level. So we're just really glad you're along for the ride. Uh, it's been another fun episode of The Dental Guys.